Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel again. I've been using Ubuntu Budgie 2004 for the last couple of days and I want to give you my review of it. So let's get going. There you go, so I downloaded the ISO and I prepared the virtual machine so we can boot up now the system by hitting enter here. And again, as it's new in Ubuntu 2004 as well, we have the new file system check here at boot. And it takes a second here to boot up. And we are now in the Ubuntu budget desktop. So first thing first, let me adjust the screen resolution here. And I go to the settings tab, which is right here and go under display and select my resolution and go to scale to 100% and hit apply. There you go. Keep this configuration. Yes, please. And I close the window up. Now I have to log out one time for the changes to take effect here. So let me do this very quickly. And here we go. So let's go ahead and install the system here. Let's double click the installer. And I'll select English here for my language and click continue. Now select the keyboard layout. As usual, I don't have a US keyboard, so I'll need to select mine here from the list. It's going to take a second to do this. And then we can click continue. Now, this is a typical install from Ubuntu. So we have the possibility here to have a normal installation with web browser utilities and so on, or minimal just with web browser and utilities. We can also choose to download updates while installing and I will leave this checked on. And this is available only because I have internet already connected here. If you have Wi-Fi, you can go here to the network icon and you will see your network here. You can select it, enter your password and you'll be able to do this as well. And we have also the option here to install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi. So if you have an NVIDIA card, for example, I definitely recommend you to do this as the drivers come directly now into the ISO. And then we can click continue. So here we can choose what kind of installation type we want to do. So we can erase the disk here and install Ubuntu Budgie. And if we click on advanced features, we can also use LVM and we could also encrypt the volume if we needed to. And we have also experimental support here for the ZFS file system. And then we can create a different partitioning type by clicking something else and click continue. So here we can create a new partition table and partition the disk how we want to. So let's go back here shortly. So if you just want to install Ubuntu Budgie very quickly and you don't have any problem erasing your disk, go ahead and select the first option. Here is the easiest one. In my case, I'm just going to go with something else this time and click continue. So I have only one disk in my system, which is the one right here. And now I need to click on new partition table. And yes, I want to create a partition table for the whole disk. So I'll just click continue. Now we have our partition here with the free disk. So I'll just click it and then click on the plus here to create the first partition. Now I want to create first the EFI partition because we need one. This is a UFI system and I want to give this partition 200 megabytes. So I'll type in here 200 and I'll leave these as default and I use as a file system here EFI system partition and then click OK. Now we have two free spaces partitions here. The first one is one megabyte and this is an alignment partition so we can let this alone. So what we need to do now is to select the second one here, which is going to be our root partition. So let's click the plus again. And I leave this as a default and these options as well. And I want to use the ext4 file system type here, but we could go ahead here and install also a ButterFS file system, for example, or any other file system we want. But I'm going to go with the ext4. And for the mount point here, I'm going to choose the root directory. So I'm going to select the slash here and click OK. So we have now our new partition here. So we made the partitions, now we can click install now. And it's going to show us the summary of the changes to the disk. By the way, these are the same changes that the automatic partitioning does. And then we can click continue. So now we can select our time zone here. And in my case, it's correct because I have an internet connection already. So I can click continue. Now let's create the new user. So I'll type in my full name here. And I'll call my computer Ubuntu Budgie. Username is fine, and I'll pick my password and retype it. Now, I want to require my password to log in, so I'll let this checked on and click continue. So now we basically have to wait until the system finishes installing, and I'll be back when it's done. 
So the installation has finished. So we can now restart the system. So I'll click restart now. And I'll press enter here to remove basically the ISO from the machine. And now it's going to take a moment to boot up the new machine here. And there you go. So let's enter our password here. And we are now in the Ubuntu Vagi. So again, I need to adjust my screen resolution. So let me do this very quickly. Now I go to the settings here. And I'll go to displays and select my resolution here, bump the scale up and click apply. And keep the configuration. Yes. And again, I need to log out quickly for the changes to take full effect. So I'll do this very quickly. Enter my password. And we are back in Budgie. So we are greeted here by the welcome screen. Let's have a look through it. So we have the browser ballot here. And by default, Ubuntu Budgie comes with Firefox, Firefox 75 to be precise. But from this screen here, you can actually remove it if you don't like it. And you can install any other browser. Note here that all the browsers that you're going to install, like much other software that you're going to install on Ubuntu Budgie, as it is in Ubuntu 24 as well, it snaps. So I'm fine with Firefox here, so I can go back to the menu. And the next one is customization. So this is the one that interests me. So basically here it's telling us that we have the budget desktop settings, which will help us customize the budget preferences. And also, of course, our normal settings that we have also in GNOME. So let's go back here and keyboard shortcuts. I don't need to do this right now. And let's go to updates here. It's a post installation task and we can check for updates here immediately. So let's do this. And the software updater pops up and I'll go ahead and update the system now. And it's going to take a moment to do this. So I'll go back here to the window. And we have also the possibility to install some restricted extra repositories. So this basically includes some non-free media formats like DVDs, MP3, QuickTime, and so on. And it's left optional because Ubuntu, of course, it's based on free software. So if you need those things, you can go ahead here and install the repositories and you'll have them available to you. So let's go back to the menu here. Another thing we can check on is drivers. Well, in my case, I'm on a virtual machine, so there's nothing I can do here. However, if you click on additional drivers here, you will see which hardware might need your attention installing proprietary drivers. So it's definitely an option to explore. So let's go back. We have also options here for language and inputs and some optional tasks here, which I'm going to skip. So I'm going to close this window up. And the software now has been already updated, so I can click OK. So the budget desktop, as you know, was developed by Solus, which offers also its own distribution, which is the Solus distribution. And it's a modern spin on the user interface. Budget it's based on GNOME, but it refines the user interface to make it a little bit more modern. So one thing which I'd like to show you, and it's new in Ubuntu Budget 2004, is the theme and layout options. So we can go to the settings here, and I'll type in layouts. And you see here we have a budget themes and layout. So let's click this. And I will increase the window size a little bit so that it's easier to see. There you go. So what we have here, we have the switch appearance and the desktop layout tab, which actually is new in Ubuntu Budget 2004. So in the switch appearance here, you can basically change the theme of your system. So for example, if you like the arc design, we can click, for example, here, apply makeover. And you can see here, we apply the theme to the top bar, to the dock as well. And of course, to the programs menu as well. By the way, we have also here new in Ubuntu Budget the overview of the apps here, or we have also the apps list available to us. If you go back here, let's choose another theme, for example. For example, this material design here, it's not installed by default, but we could install it by clicking install. This will install everything and the icons as well, by the way. And we have many other themes here we can try. So I'm gonna go back here shortly. There you go. And let's go back on the top here and change to desktop layout. So for example, right now we have Ubuntu Budgie, which is a standard one, but we can go, for example, to classic Ubuntu Budgie, or we can also go to Redmond, which is going to be more like Windows, or we can go also to traditional Budgie, which is going to be more like Solos. So if you click here, apply layout, we have the top part here comes from the bottom, and we have more a traditional look for Budgie here, which resembles the Solos distribution. We have, of course, also our Raven panel here on the right side available to us. If you scroll down the window here again, we have some other layouts. For example, we have the Cupertino layout, which is going to be more similar to Mac OS. Let's click this shortly. And you can see here we have the dock on the bottom, and we have also the menus on the top left here. 
So if we're going to open up a program, for example, let's open up here the calculator. We see we have the calculator menu here on top, exactly like it is in Mac OS. Same goes also for the windows. The windows control are moved over here to the left, same as in Mac OS. So let's close this up and I'll go back to the Ubuntu Baji and I'll click apply layout. Now let's close this up here and let's go to the desktop Baji settings. So I'll type in here Baji settings and here we have Baji desktop settings. So let's have a look at the options here. So we can change the widget style. Right now it's Posillo, but we can also go to Posillo Dark, for example. Oh, let's go back to Posillo here. And we have also the possibility to change icons if we don't like the standard ones here. And we have a lot of choice here. Same goes for the cursor and notification position. We can also go to the dark theme here, which will make everything dark, except several aspects of the system. For example, the right clicking here, still we have the light menu here. So in this case, what we need to do to make everything dark is to go to the widgets here and select Posillo Dark. And now we have also the elements here, which are dark. On the top panel option here, we can customize the applets available to us. So right now, what we see here, it's everything already in the top bar, but we can choose to add an applet here, for example, by clicking the plus menu. And we can select one we want. So for example, we want to have the caffeine applet there. So we can click caffeine and click add applet. And you can see here, it has added on the center. So it's right here. And if you click it, it's available to us. We can move it around to other parts of the top bar, but for now, I'm going to let it there. So this is a very customizable top bar. Now let's go to settings here. We can change, of course, the position. If you don't want to have it on the top, you can move it also somewhere else. And we can change also his side, its transparency and other options as well. So let's close this up. So let's have a look at the files here, which has been changed in Ubuntu Budget 24 from Nautilus to Nemo to offer also a more consistent look throughout the desktop. And there are also many benefits from this. And one of them is, for example, split view. So if we right click on one of the folders here and click on open a new tab, it's nice to have tabs here for each folder. We can move also things around. So let's close this up. And the integration with Nemo, it's not only on the files app, but also on the desktop. Of course, if we right click here, we have the same options. Now let's have a look at the applications available. We have, as we said before, Firefox 75. This is default in Ubuntu Budget 24. And let's go to the internet tab here. And we have Giri as a default application for email, which is nice. I like Giri. It's a very modern looking email client. For the Office suite, we have, of course, LibreOffice. Let's open it up. And let's click OK here. And we notice immediately one thing here, we don't have the menus. And that's because Ubuntu Bargy has what's called a global access menu, which is right now not available. So one way to do this is to add the applet here on the top. But if you don't like this behavior, we need to remove the applet from the system. So let's go back here. Let's close the window and let's go back to the programs here and type in applets. And we have budget applets here. So let's click it. And we need to scroll down here until we find the global menu applet. And there you go. So we can click remove. It's going to take a moment to do this. There you go. So we can close this up. We need to log out once for the changes to take effect here. So I'll do this very quickly. Get my password. And now let's open up LibreOffice again. Let's go to the Office tab here and open up Writer. And we have now our menus here on top. So let's check the version here. We go to About LibreOffice. And version is 6422. This is the same version available also in Ubuntu 24. So let's close this up and close LibreOffice. So we have several accessories here for our disk, the calculator, and we have also the preferences for the dock, which is called Plank in Ubuntu Budgie. We have a few games as well already installed. And for the graphics, we have, of course, LibreOffice Draw, and we have also GThumb Image Viewer as a default image viewer here. We saw already the internet tab here. We have Geary and Firefox. We have also already installed transmission for BitTorrents. We have LibreOffice for our Office Suite, and we have also some other tools available in the system here. So let's go to the utilities here shortly. And let's go down to the terminal, which is Tilix in Ubuntu Budgie. So with Tilix is nice, you can split the terminal very quickly here by clicking these buttons. So for example, we can add a terminal here to the right by clicking this, one on the bottom by clicking this. So it's very customizable and it's very fast. Let me enlarge this window here. So let me delete these two terminal up first. And let's type in uname dash R and hit enter. We have the kernel 5.4. This is standard in Ubuntu 24 as well. Let's check for updates one more time. sudo apt update and hit enter. Enter our sudo password. And let's see if there is any upgrade here by replacing update with upgrade. 
there are no new packages here, but there are some packages which need to be removed as they are not anymore used. And we can do this by typing in sudo apt auto remove and hit enter. And go ahead to do this. And the packages not needed are now removed. So of course, another thing we can do here is to check the software center. So let's go back here and type software and hit the software center here. This is the standard software center that comes with Ubuntu and GNOME as well. So let's go to shopping. And we have all applications available here. So we should have also Spotify available to us, for example, if you want to have that. There you go. And we can explore here, of course, many other software that we might need. And many of those will be, as we saw before, snaps. So for example, if you go to Opera here, so if you scroll down here, we can see this is a snap and it's going to be installed as one, like most of the applications here in the software center. So let's close this up. So Ubuntu Budget 24, it's a very nice distribution. I really like the budget desktop environment. It feels very modern. It's based on GNOME 3.36.1, so it offers better performance. And I really enjoy to use the budget desktop. It's very customizable and it has a very solid base, which is Ubuntu 24 on an LTS kernel. So if you like the budget desktop environment, definitely give it a try and let me know what you think about it. So there you go, this is my take of Ubuntu Budget 2004. I have to say, I really like the budget desktop environment. It's really fast and snappy and it's really customizable. As I said before in the video, the budget desktop environment is developed by Solus, which also offers its own Linux distribution. But I really like Ubuntu Budget because it offers the budget desktop environment its modern look with a solid foundation of Ubuntu 2004. So if you like the budget desktop environment, definitely give it a try and let me know what you think about it. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel you can visit our Patreon website or you can also donate to the channel through PayPal via the website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.